Welcome back guys. Today we are going to look at uh, the basic principles and workings of an indirect hot water cylinder. Now this is going to be something that's pretty much in most homes. So it's good to always know what you've got, what they do, how it works. If there's any problems you might be able to solve it yourself. But it's good to know what you're looking at. So let me walk you through it. Okay guys, what we're going to run through today before we head home is the basics of a hot water cylinder, like this one here. This is the average one in the household. It's an indirect cylinder, which if I run around here, should be able to see it says indirect somewhere. I can't quite see myself. Now what that basically means is it indirectly heats the hot water from the boiler. So these two pipes here is the flow and return. So it flows into the cylinder through a coil and back down to the boiler. So it indirectly heats the hot water. Okay. Now we're going on to the pipe work first. This single 15 mil pipe here, that is your cold mains. That's what feeds your taps, your bathroom taps, your kitchen taps, everything else. You'll have a stop cock in the kitchen normally, and then you'll have this one in the airing cupboard and an isolation valve on it there, like so. That basically runs up to a couple of tanks in the loft. You'll have your central heating one and your cold water one. Normally the bigger one is, is, is the one for the tank. So that feeds it up to the tank. It'll have a bore valve on the tank, which will release the water into the tank and then down through this pipe here into the bottom of your cylinder. You can see in there. And normally you, you have got a, a, a drain off on there, but sometimes it'll be out on a stick of pipe here and you can drain it off. This is going to be an absolute nightmare to drain down. So this is your cold fill from your tank in the loft. It's your cold water fill. And then this pipe here is your hot water draw off. So you cut your cold water comes in the bottom. It heats itself up via the boiler or the immersion heater and it rises all the way up to the top of the tank and out of your hot water drawer off. You may sometimes, and what is good practice, is to put a check valve on here. Just an isolation valve, lever valve will be fine, any sort of valve on there will be fine, just so you can work on the hot water quicker, basically, because if you turn that off there, it'll isolate your hot water, so you can work on it. Not a lot of people know that. They know where the, uh, where the cold water stop clock is in the kitchen, but they don't really know how to work on the hot water. So you'll need that valve up there. Okay, isolate that, drain your tap, should be fine, because it won't have to drain the tanks and the loft then. And then of course, you've got your immersion heater here, which is again, another way of heating your hot water. That's basically it, guys. These indirect cylinders are so simple. So of course, if you come to work on one, all you've got to do is isolate your supply, isolate your tank, drain it all off, if you've got a, if you've got a, a drain off down here, normally out on a bit of pipe, like I say, just drain it there. But of course, I'm not going to be able to get to mine. So it's going to be an absolute nightmare. And then obviously drain your cylinder off and replace. But if you do come to replacing these or taking them off, just be careful when it's not something bad if you're taking it out. But what you can do is twist these and it can bend or split the coil inside, okay, with your grips. So say if you've got them on like that and, and you come to undo it, you can split it inside if you do it too tight. So just be wary of that. Um, it's not so bad if you're putting a new one in, it doesn't really matter about the old one. But when you come to put the new one in, don't over tighten it too much because you will split them. And also, when you come to putting an immersion in, you'll need an immersion spanner. And again, they can be nasty for cross threading. So be very, 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 very careful with them. Because if you do, it's a new cylinder, I'm afraid. And it'll cost you a fortune. And that's it, guys. So I hope this helps you or help, helps you understand it a little bit better. So as you can see, in this incident, looking at this hot water cylinder, there's nothing to it, really. It's quite basic, quite simple. It's the most simple system you can get. There are way more intricate systems that eventually I will cover. Feel free, if this isn't your sort of system, send me pictures, ask me questions, bang them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and give me a thumbs up, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.